a lot on this health care law. On Thursday, on the eve of that vote in the House on Fred Upton's, uh, Upton's plan, where there were 39 Democratic defections, I want to bring in Democratic Congressman Steve Cohen of Tennessee. He joins us live this morning from Memphis. Congressman, appreciate you taking the time. So the, the headline, I guess, coming out of that vote yesterday is the Democratic revolt that everybody was talking about all week didn't really materialize with only 39 defections. But when you look at the, the fix that the president's put forward, and we were talking about a little bit in the last in the last segment. You have state health insurance commissioners right now who are who are basically balking at the idea of implementing this. You had a meeting of, of insurers at the White House yesterday, and the insurers walking away saying, well, "We're not sure we really want to you know take part in this." So it, it seems unclear at this moment that this is actually going to address the problem that created this whole crisis this week. How confident are you this morning that what the president outlined this week as an administrative fix is actually going to get the job done? Well, I think the real problem is getting the website up. And when the website starts to work, people will be able to see that their insurance will be better and at, and, and, and at better rates with going, going into the exchanges. And, and, and right now, the people having their policies canceled might not realize the, how weak a coverage they had and how much better coverage they can have, and they may desire it. But right now, they do it in many states. It sounds to me, I'm sorry, but it sounds to me like you're almost saying yesterday's vote was almost about, or the, the administrative fix is more about buying time to get the website up and running because that's when people getting cancellation notes will, will really get a good deal. And you don't want to do anything right now that's going to disrupt the law once the website's up and running. Was this really just about buying time? Is that, what, is that the purpose of the administrative fix? I don't think it was. I think he was trying to... to, to, to respond to the, to the outcry in the Democratic caucus. The Democrats who voted for this, and, and, and the Democrats in general, remember 2010. We lost a lot of our good friends. We lost our majority in 2010. Now, you quoted someone who said, and, and it was valid, it was worth it. But is it worth it? We've had the worst Congress in history going on now, doing nothing and trying to repeal so many of the great things that American uh, uh, Congresses in the past have passed. This, this effort, the Republican Congress, we need to get the Democrats back in, and we have a slim hope of getting control in 2014, getting a minimum wage, creating jobs, helping the environment, getting some things done, and we can't do that if we've got another 2010 facing us. Right now, the uh, idea of if you like it, you can keep it, that's going to be a clause that's going to come back that's probably going to haunt us in November of 2014. This was an attempt to get us beyond that, but to help the Democrats have something they can vote for. The president would like this fix to work, and if, but if it doesn't work, it's going to be clear it's not because of the Affordable Care Act. It's because of insurance companies and insurance regulators and others. It's not because of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, Congressman Robert Costa here. 39 Democrats voted for the Upton bill on Friday, but how high could that number have been? How many Democrats in the cloakroom are uneasy right now with this implementation process? I think a lot, just about every Democrat is. The, the rollout has been horrendous, and, and all of us just are, can't understand how that could happen. We had three years to get it, to, to get it uh, prepared, and we can't understand why there wasn't anybody that saw that it was going to be not going to work and, and, and delayed it. Uh, the, the mood in the caucus uh, this week was, was really strong. It, the message was taken back to the president. Uh, the 39 votes, I wasn't surprised. Most of them were blue dogs, a lot from California where a lot of notices have gone out, and they were defensive measures. The bill's not going to go anywhere. But the mood is, is very strong. And the fact is, it, it's, it's, there's an underlying problem that the, the White House really hasn't shown a lot of love to Congress, the Democrats in general. And there's been belief in the Democratic caucus that the relationship isn't what it should be and that and the Democratic Congress people who have gone out of their way, uh, well, bad of philosophy and principle, but have supported the president and consistent on philosophy, haven't seen... Uh, the White House work with well, them as much uh, as they'd like them just to. Just very, very quickly to follow up on that, Congressman, then, because you had predictions from Fred Upton of 100 defections. Do you think before President Obama came out and spoke on Thursday, do you think if that vote had been taken before that, you would have seen 100 defections from Democrats? You'd have seen a lot more. You know, I don't know. Of course, Upton's high, high, you know, putting a high number on it, hoping to attract people. I had predicted after the second meeting, uh, when we knew the fix was coming, there'd be 20 to 25. I guess I was lowballing, but... Right before the vote, I asked one of the head counters, and he said it could be anywhere from 30 to 70. So going into it, we didn't know. 39 wasn't too bad. 
Uh, you, you knew about 15, 20 blue dogs were going to vote no. And then there were, you know, people that, one of my colleagues who was beaten in 2010 and voted for Upton's fix, she, she saw what happened and she just had a flashback to 2010. And a lot of us had that. We don't want to lose our colleagues. We don't want to lose our blue dogs. We want a majority. We want America back to work. We want to create jobs bills. And we want to have an effective Congress that can get things done. This is hum somewhat humiliating to be in this Congress because it is the worst Congress in history. And, and the Republicans just want to keep their power. This Boehner wants to keep his speakership, and they don't want to do anything. You know, it's funny, when Upton started his address, he quoted some presidents over the years in the lines that they're known for, and he suggested this president will be known for. If you like your insurance, you can keep it. He quoted Reagan for, tear down this wall, Mr. Gorbachev. He should have quoted Reagan for, there you go again, because there they went again, 46 times to try to repeal the Affordable Care Act. It took us 50 years, some could say 100, starting with Teddy Roosevelt, to pass the Affordable Care Act. A couple of months with the, the defects, which are unfortunate and wrong, with the, the, the Internet program and, and, and the website, shouldn't stop us from 100 right. years, right. 50 years, whatever you want to say, Congressman, progress. We are, we are really short on time, but I want to get Brian Boyler in here quickly. Hi, Congressman Brian Boyler with uh, Salon.com. My question is, looking ahead to January or February, if you have a situation where the website isn't working still, if enrollments have been really weak but cancellations have been really high, uh, can you see a situation where Democrats give Republicans a veto-proof majority for some kind of legislation that cuts at the real architecture of the law? Uh, and when are when would that happen? And what what how far would Democrats go? Delay delay of parts of the law, outright repeal. What do you see happening? You know, there's enough Democrats who philo philosophically are going to support the president, politically can support the president, philosophically support the law. That I can't see a veto-proof number coming up. I just don't see that happening. But you got to remember, we just put off the budget, we put off the sequester. Uh, we didn't cure that problem. We put it off. So you've got a real some problems coming up in January and in December with budget numbers and the sequester. So there's a lot of problems going to arise. But the bottom line is the Democrats are going to be vulnerable to Republican attacks on the Affordable Care Act regardless. I understand why those 39 voted the way they did, but I think the rest of the caucus is pretty strong and will stick with the president and support him and support the Affordable Care Act. All right, Congressman Steve Cohen from Tennessee, appreciate the time this Saturday morning, and we'll be right back to pick it up right after this. Thanks. I'm Angela, and I didn't think I could quit 